Welcome to Traders TV, I'm Dan Barnes. Emerging markets are looking increasingly attractive as an investment target for fixed income investment managers. However, trading in emerging markets can be challenging. Today we're talking with Tanya Munro, Director and Emerging Markets Product Manager at Tradeweb, to discuss some of the challenges of trading fixed income bonds and fixed income derivatives electronically in EM. Tanya, welcome to Traders TV. Thanks for having me, Dan. How's the appetite for emerging markets fixed income trading changing at the moment? 2020 has certainly been a unique year. I think we've seen participants have a greater reliance on technology and have had to become more comfortable with it very quickly. The pandemic has really accelerated you know, the move towards electronic trading. Additionally, from an investing standpoint, clients have had to really become more flexible in terms of their investment approach. Yeah. You know, in this world of negative real rates, the EM space is becoming a bit more attractive. Things like EM sovereign debt that could potentially yield a bit more are seeing more players in the space. And what sort of challenges do traders face trading in emerging markets versus developed markets typically? I think all markets really are still faced with a bit of a liquidity challenge, right? Traders are also faced with workflow challenges using many disparate systems. They're receiving information from many different sources that has to be synthesized. There are also best execution challenges. If you look at the EM space, you've got a couple of extra unique challenges, right? You can have language barriers. You've got many more counterparties because not only are you dealing with the traditional large global banks, you're also dealing with local banks and local clients, pension funds, you know, investment advisors, hedge funds. And how do you see those challenges, such as liquidity differences, vary between the cash bond markets and the derivative space? Sure. Well, in the cash market, there's the unique challenge of just the sheer number of bonds available in the space, right? And that can make liquidity seem a little harder to access. There is no concept of trace. So price transparency is also quite an issue in that space. On the derivative side, it's a bit different. You don't have quite as many counterparties, but you do have issues around pricing consistency. And we're hearing that from clients that they're becoming very, very interested in knowing, you know, what are the hit rates on the platform? What are the quote rates? This is really resonating with them. And where do you see electronic trading making an impact in EM today? I think the biggest impact really is on accessibility. The advent of all-to-all -all trading has made it possible for more counterparties to interact, right? You now not only have the large global banks, but you also have local players that have access to each other as well. We've seen an increase in the number of clients on the platform. We've got over 350 clients transacting across all of our EM products now. So we think that this ease of onboarding is really helping and making a big impact in the space. And typically, we think of global players as having connectivity to all the electronic platforms. But of course, that may not be true for some local markets where the local and regional dealers might actually be the dominant players. Does that make a difference to the development of electronic trading in some of the EM spaces? Absolutely. It certainly made it more challenging. But mm. I think, again, in this era of working from home and the lockdown has really sort of accelerated the need for those players to be piped in just as well as their global counterparts. And so we're actually hearing directly from some of those players that would like to participate more for help with connectivity. And then which trading protocols specifically are supporting bond traders in executing EM and hard currency orders? Well, there have been a lot of new exciting protocols recently that have come to market, right? You've got the advent of all-to-all -all trading, you've got automated trading, but I think the one that's really resonating most is portfolio trading. Mm -hmm. It's this concept of trading a large number of bonds as a basket on a net proceeds basis. And clients have often used this as a way to manage their fund inflows or outflows to alter the risk profile of their fund. But now more and more, we're seeing clients use it as an alternative protocol. So in instances where you know, certainty of execution becomes very important. This protocol is very relevant because for portfolio trading, we see at least 95% of the portfolios trade in their entirety, right? 
And in the EM space, we're seeing a huge increase in portfolios that are not only blended portfolios, so investment grade that include EM line items, but also EM only. We've seen a, about a 300% increase in volume in terms of portfolios that have EM line items this quarter. And then what developments are you seeing in the swap space in emerging markets? Swap space also has some newer protocols being used or protocols that are less traditional. For instance, request for market known as RFM, which is basically a client coming in and asking for a two-sided quote. That's become pretty popular on our platform. The regulatory environment in that space also has made it so that electronic trading is almost an imperative, right? Mm -hmm. Cleared volumes have increased exponentially. At TradeWeb, we're really using that as a way to inform our decisions in terms of what other EM currencies in the swap space we're going to support. And the increase in volumes is really showing client demand. In Q3, we did over $110 billion of executed volume in EM IRS. Wow, that's amazing. Pulling these ideas together then, what sort of evolutionary themes do you think you can see for the development of electronic trading in EM? I think clients are going to demand more sophisticated tools. They're going to want more streamlined capability to trade multi-asset securities. They're going to want to have, you know, faster response times and certainty of execution, which is going to continue to be a huge theme, I think, next year. I think platforms such as TradeWeb that offer a holistic solution and make the entire process more efficient really stand to do well in this environment. That's been fantastic. Tanya, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Dan. I'd like to thank Tanya for her insights today, and of course, you for watching. To catch up on our other shows, or to subscribe to our newsletter, go to tradingtv.net or etftv.net.